and she said there has to be justice in policing. She put together the le uh, legislation, working together with members of the Judiciary Committee, on which she serves, working with the distinguished... Uh, she doesn't serve. Yeah. She does serve, yes. yes. She serves on so many... She's so many chairs of so many things, the <laughs> Foreign Affairs Committee, but working with the distinguished chair, Mr. Nadler, whom I would be pleased to yield to in just a moment, but not before acknowledging us, Karen Best, as its certain landmark dates. Nearly one year ago, George Floyd gasped his last words, I can't breathe, and ignited a nationwide reckoning on the racial injustice and police brutality that exists in our country. I can't breathe. Since then, Americans from every corner of the country, and actually people throughout the world, have taken to the streets to peacefully protest violence against black Americans. Yet despite these protests, violence continues. We cannot accept this epi epidemic of injustice, which is why we will pass and send, uh, well, we have passed <laughs> now, we have passed and sent to the Senate and to President um, the president, the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act, so it can become the law of the land. We're proud of this legislation, which will fundamentally transform the culture with bold, unprecedented reforms, some of which the distinguished chair, uh, Chairwoman Bass, uh, mentioned. It will not erase centuries of systemic racism and ex excessive policing, and it will not bring back George Floyd. Breonna Taylor, say her name, Breonna Taylor, Amon Arbery, or the countless others who have been killed or harmed. But it will take a tremendous step forward to stop the violence, stem the suffering, and start to build a better America. We all have respect for our men and women in blue who serve our country, uh, protecting all of us. Uh, set on the floor, many of them leave home uh, to uh, risk their lives, to save lives, to protect, to provide perfect protection in our community. Overwhelmingly, they are not part of this culture of violence against African Americans. But nonetheless, uh, our respect for them uh, cannot turn into apathy against what we know is happening and that must be stopped. It must be stopped. Our colleague, Madeline Dean, uh, when she was on the floor, she talked about I can't breathe and how George Floyd called out for his mother. Mother, his mother. Any mother in the country who heard that had to be so impacted by it. I said on the floor that uh, I think of George Floyd all the time, even when I'm not thinking in terms of this injustice. Even when I'm washing my hands and they say, wash your hands for 20 seconds in terms of COVID so that your hands are thoroughly washed. And I think I can't do that for 20 seconds. It's taking too much time. Eight minutes and 46 seconds of intentional knee to the neck, a public lynching an assassination before our very eyes. So I said to the family when they asked, Madam Speaker, will you name the bill for George? I said, only if you think the bill is worthy of that. And he, they said it was, and they were 